uh, first monetary policy committee meeting in 2020 by Nigeria's Central Bank, Nova Merchant Bank, uh, on Thursday released the economic research report ahead of today's Central Bank uh, decision, stating it's going to be a dovish stance but hawkish actions. The bank's uh, uh, research analyst says the odds are largely in favor of a hold of monetary policy parameters and a likely higher CRR sometime in 2020 to combat the rising system liquidity. Uh, the bank says there will likely going to be a continued differentiation in CRR depending on every bank's uh, loan to deposit ratio against the regulated 65%. Uh, the bank also said we should expect an announcement of administrative measures. Meantime, the unorthodox policies of the central bank will continue in the year, and the central bank may test newer policies in 2020 to ensure the stability of the FX market. In terms of the FX reserves, the Nova Merchant Bank says the uh, level could uh, touch as low as $33.5 billion by year end, but some borrowings or possible borrowings may push that figure to about $36.4 billion US dollars. Meantime, the central bank chief, Godwin Mifele, had his uh, last dinner with the bankers in December, highlighting what would be the central bank's policy direction for 2020, which includes monetary policy stands to remain judicious, research-driven, adequate, and supportive of the real economy, based, however, on the fundamentals. The current stance, according to the central bank, will continue in the, in the near, term, near term in view of the rising inflation expectations and the exchange rate uh, regime. The current capital reversals was noted last December by the central bank governor, but exchange rate stability will be maintained. Uh, meantime, the deepening of the real sector interventions will continue. Loan to deposit ratio uh, will be sustained for inclusive, diversified, and sustainable growth. Of course, uh, the uh, regulator also addressed concerns of some folks about whether the new deposit loan to deposit ratio will have an impact on the quality of banks' assets. My panelists, this uh, Friday ahead of that, this, this announcement, uh, let's get them back into the conversation. Uh, Tajuddin Ibrahim, thank you so much from uh, uh, Chapel Hill. Um, Oladoke Funke, thank you so much from uh, uh, Deloitte, Nigeria, and Bola Haino from Kodos Capital. Thank you, uh, three of you, for coming here. Now, let's drill down a little bit more about what we already know, uh, this, 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 this central bank governor uh, had remained a little bit hawkish, as it were, when it comes to credit to the, to the real sector. He's hawkish when it comes to keeping the FX stability. He's hawkish about se some sectoral interventions, whether it's into entertainment, into creative industry, yeah. to agriculture, uh, textiles, and all of that. So, uh, and the banks, I'm sure, took a bit of a beating. Uh, uh, last uh, uh, year, who's close to a bank here? You're an investment banker, I tell you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, do you do you think there anything could have changed in both the central bank and within and by the MPC by this, today's decision? Okay, so what I think we should um, you know, talk about is around the loan to deposit ratio. That's key for you. Yes. So, what the CBN is trying to do is to ensure increased flow of credit to the private sector. When you have that, you would be expecting stronger economic growth. We have seen that decision made sometime July last year, that uh, you know, the LDR should be 60% and then later on moved to 65%. So as we speak, net domestic credit has increased by about 31% on an annualized basis. And that is largely speaking because of the increase in the loan to deposit ratio to around 65%. So we are seeing more banks trying to lend. And if you look at interest rate on the other side, the fact that the CBN reformed the OMO market, we've seen interest rates moderate materially. So what some banks have done is to cut their interest rates, particularly to the retail segment of the market, to, bo to buy or support the growth of credit uh, you know, to consumers. So all those factors, at some point, should have positive effects on economic growth. And I think the, the CBN is just keen on that. And we should see some numbers flow in positively on the back of that in the next couple of quarters. You sound dovish. I love that as well. <laughs> so, Funke, yes. uh, 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 the, the central banks use 
a number of unorthodox means to try and governize the economy, in mm -hmm. particular the credit market mm -hmm. for the consumer markets, yeah. MSMEs in yeah. particular. Uh, so it looks like, uh, if you look at the GDP numbers for third quarter, it looks like some of these are beginning to come through, yeah. not as, 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 uh, uh, as, as much as folks would want it. Mm -hmm. So there's still a bit of concerns out there yeah. about this. How long do you think the central bank will be able to keep this unusual monetary policy stance moving forward, now that we're seeing inflation moving up, interest rates are at about 13.5, I mean the NPR, do you think there's a room here to be a bit more accommodative on the part of the MPC? Yes, I, I, th I think so, um, but I, if you, let me just take us back a bit, you know, um, so we have monetary and fiscal policies, right? And then we have all sorts of interventions, right? And then so what we try to, I mean, what the CBN has tried to do is to ensure that, you know, there's alignment of purpose, okay? And that's why at times when they feel that, you know, um, there has to be some interventions, they come in and, and do that. And I think so far it has worked, right? Um, so for, in, in a, I mean, I expect that it will continue, um, and that's why I'm very much interested in the uh, NPR. I expect that that should at least remain um, constant because you can't, on one hand, say you want to spur economic growth, you want to control inflation, you want to align monetary and fiscal policy, and then you having policies that contradict each other. So, for instance, if you look at the fiscal um, framework, it's trying to encourage the SMEs because we know that these are people that have impact on the economy. You know, so we're trying to say, oh, okay, for instance, in terms of taxation, you know, just give them some kind of incentives in terms of borrowing, some kind of incentives, you know, you have all those things in place. And then, at the, uh, you cannot then turn and then begin to play with the, uh, with the NPR because it, it tends to have negative effects on that. So for me, I think if they continue, yeah, it's it, at the point in time they have to review, right? But I I think there are some of those policies that also have to be consistent. For instance, some of the things that have been said in the past is that we tend to have policy somersaults, in which case, you know, one arm of the government is trying to chase this and the other arm is trying to say that. We say, look, this is government, government is government. You know, um, at the last um, Nigerian UK summit, what are we trying to uh, achieve? We're trying to say, let people come into the country, you know. So, and if somebody is coming to invest into your country, you have to provide some form of stability. People must be able to plan. So 2019 was a year we had so many things in, you know, people said, oh, there were so many things that were going to happen, and we didn't really see much traction. So this time around, I think the intervention will continue <coughs> as long as, you know, um, they, they are seeing the data and they are seeing that it's having a positive impact on that. Uh, uh, well, how do you think that we will, if we're going to hold the NPR at 13.5%, mm -hmm. how much longer into 2020 do you think the central bank will be able to hold it? Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the fact that here is inflation heading towards 12%. Yeah. Um, by the time January numbers is out in a couple of weeks, most likely, most likely we'll, we'll dust, we were about 11.98%. Yes. So uh, if you take a look at this, do you think they'll be able to hold on, even though the central bank chiefs told Bloomberg uh, late last year that they want to talk about interest rate easing until yeah. well into 2020? When will this happen? Second quarter, Q3, Q4, if, if, if and if by then we'll see a lot more of implementation of the 2020 budget? Okay, um, very good question, Red. Um, I'm particularly very interested in this NPC. Um, I think they're going to maintain status quo. But beyond that, um, a lot of things have happened from the last NPC meeting. Um, like I mentioned, inflation rates is on the northward tra trajectory. Um, if you look at our current account balance, it's negative. Um, if you look at um, our external reserve at $38 billion. Um, so it's been dipping for the past six, six months. Of course, the, um, the trend is that it's still going to continue dipping. Um, so things like that is going to inform whatever decision are going to come out today. Um, while I expect status quo, um, but in, 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 in a couple of months to come, they might not be able to maintain the rate at what it is. Um, also, if you know that, notice there are a lot of liquidity in the system. In the month of January and February, we spent about $2 trillion to mature in terms of OMO. Um, those liquidity needs to find its way into asset classes. And that liquidity also has a tendency to also push up in, um, inflation rate as well. So with inflation rate going up, with external reserve dipping, with um, current account balance negative, that is really a bit of concern. Um, for the MPC. Also, um, for loan growth has increased, but of course, it will be interesting to see the bank financials when they release it. I expect NPLs also have increased, sort of, because um, credit is going to some to the private sector, and I expect um, NPLs to have increased as well. So it's going to be interesting. So beyond what the um, MPC decision is, I would like to see the body language of the MPC. I'd like to see what, going, what they have to say about inflation, what they have to say about external reserve, what they have to say 
about credit growth and what they have to say about the dipping SNR reserve. I tell you, is the, are you seeing, are there elements of uh, a bit of a coming closer or what you call alignment of both fiscal and monetary policy uh, from the second half of last year to where we are at the moment in terms of some of what Funke spoke about earlier? Uh, do you think there's a bit of a, an alignment coming through now, again, since we have this strategic revenue uh, initiative, which is warehouse with the Zena Bamed's uh, Ministry of Finance, coming to where you have the customs, you have this. It looks like, even with the land border closure and a few noises around it and protests and what have you, uh, protest voices, I mean, it looks like all the agencies seem to be speaking from the same voice. So, is this a good thing that we're beginning to see uh, in terms of these alignments? And much more do you think the fiscal authority should do to help the central bank begin to deleverage its own balance sheet? We're heavily geared. About nine trillion of pension funds assets are already yeah. in the pockets of the federal government. Yeah. Sorry, about seven or, or so. I thought about uh, ten trillion That's right. already out there. So we have just a balance of about two point something two point trillion. Something, yeah. So there's not much money in the PFA, really. If we look at that, almost five hundred billion uh, DMO uh, naira bond auction this week. Okay, so I think uh, there, the two of them are moving in the right direction, and I think uh, what we should probably take a look at is how. Um, the action of the CBN has supported the moderation of interest rates. And if you take a look at the government, they've been borrowing, and then you have the cost of borrowing being high. Mm -hmm. So with lower interest rates, the government is now able to borrow at lower rates, which saves costs in terms of the cost of you know, governing the country. That's one. Two is around the border closure. We are seeing increased sort of production of local uh, food as we speak on the back of that, uh, that decision. And um, if you take a look at the finance bill, just like Funke has said earlier on, what we would expect is increased revenue, at least from the tax, um, tax front. Uh, so that should support the, the, the government sort of revenue generation. But there are downside risks to how long the CBN can hold yeah. interest rates lower as we speak. So the major one of them, Balao mentioned it around the current account balance being negative. So what it means is we are unable to finance our imports without necessarily you know, you know, seeing FPIs. So we have to see much FPIs inflows. And for you to attract more FPIs, you need higher interest rates to attract those FPIs for you to finance your, uh, your, your, your imports because we have very tiny foreign direct investments. So we rely, largely speaking, on the FPIs. So that is very important. You also talked about interest rates. So yields are in the negative territory in terms of real yields, as we speak. So that should also partly result in some repricing of yields in the market, and we suspect that that will happen in the second half That's in the short term. Yeah. It looks like you investors are moving into the long end of the curve. Mm -hmm. uh, the DMO auction this week, 274 billion into 2049 paper. That shows that PFAs, insurance folks, are looking long term. That's what the government wants. Yeah. That's what the central bank said last yes. year. That the government wants, the federal government wants to drive investment, local borrowings, into the long end of the curve. Yeah and allow the short end to come, and we're seeing commercial papers at 6%. Yeah. Those who floated CPs two years ago or so were, <laughs> were, were pricing okay. those yeah. uh, earlier. You guys are doing end IDF, uh, tied you in, yes. and I'm sure you, 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 yes. you're looking at the market. Even the Lagos State, 100 billion infrastructure bond. Yes, so, so the Lagos State, for instance, you know, cleared at 12.25%. So that, okay. that, that's, that's, that's around. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So, 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 okay. so that gives some incentives to... To PFAs. Instead of 14% or, or higher. Exactly. Yeah. Like so, so which is positive, yeah. which saves a bit of cost yeah. for, for the state. And uh, secondly, if you take a look at our NIDF that you mentioned now, so that product you know, gives investors some incentives around interest rates because what they are, they are seeing with the government now is around 11% or they're about a 10 year bond. But if you purchase our NIDF, what you get is well over 400 basis points around that 10-year bond, which is 11%. So we are positive on all those ones. But what we are saying is that at some point, the current account deficit, higher inflation, and the probably necessity for the government to borrow more in the second half 
will probably result into higher interest rates. We have one uh, big problem on our hands, and uh, on social media, in particular Twitter, has been very hot over the last few days or weeks in terms of liquidity mm -hmm. in the system. Funke, this is one big issue. It's a simple economics. You have too much money, you don't have, we are less productive, you know the end result is inflation. Yes. So what, how do we deal with this liquidity? The central bank is aggressively mopping up. The DMO is doing the same thing. Yields are low. There's still so much money on the street. How do we mop this? How do we, how do we contain this? Where, would this? where should this money go? And how do we drive it there? Yeah, I think, I think um, you know, like you mentioned earlier on, I think we should look, have a long-term approach to, you know, um, how we want to manage the economy because I think that is what is sustainable, right? And when you look at what drives an economy, what should we be investing in, right? So if you have excess liquidity, I think what we need to do is to encourage investment in real sectors, in sectors that we know it's, the, it's not, um, it's, you know, it takes a while, but they are more sustainable. You understand what I'm saying? So if we encourage investment in, in such sectors, you know, those are the things that can real, it's, it's not a short-term gain for us, you know, but it's something we should look at even in the long term. So if you have excess liquidity, we should find a way to channel into people that really need, because the truth is that the small and medium scale enterprises are also saying that we don't have access to funds. Right? But so, there's so much liquidity. Yeah, but... But there's no access to it. Well, that's what, that's what, that's what they're saying. So they're saying that even the little, the one where we could get, the cost of borrowing is high. That's what they're saying. So because we, you know, so I've been in, in sessions where we have interactions with them. They're telling you, oh, really, we have these laudable things. We have feasibility studies. We've done economic impact assessment. But the truth is that we don't have access to funding. And they're saying that, look, if we have this, we can do this, we can do this, we can... I mean, we read things like that in the, in the papers every day. So I think it's just find a way to get it to them. Right, so that they can also, you know, be able to leverage this and be able to deliver the economy. But, but, but uh, is there any likelihood, therefore, the the, the last treasure of 65 LDR, 65 percent LDR, was January? Uh, the central bank says we're going to push that a little bit till March. Mm -hmm. Based on what Funke is saying, are you seeing 70 percent? So for now, I still think. And if to... yes, would, would that be good enough? with the way the central bank is debiting CRR with the banks for this issue on liquidity. So I still expect 65% to hold forth for a, a bit more. Into March and beyond March? We are in, into March. Into March. Uh, I like what um, Tajin said. And of, of course, the big issue is that inflation is going up. And I think central bank needs to consider that. Our external reserve is dipping. We have a negative current account balance. So for how long are they going to maintain this low interest rate? You um, can't afford to have your interest rates real return to be negative. You can't attract the FPIs that you want to come into the system. So for Nigeria, most of our current accounts is usually from API inflows. If you look at FDI inflow, for instance, it has dipped significantly. On the average, it's about $2 billion. For last year, it was just about $600 million. Um, so we are not having FDI inflow. We are not having FPI inflows. And of course, you need to attract those FPIs with high interest rates. Um, so I think um, they might not be able to hold these low rates for so long. Um, after some time, they might have to give in. Because it's just markets, and there's a lot of liquidity in the system that is going to probably drive inflation rate to go higher than expected. Very interesting. It's just a quick quote. Uh, the central bank governor and other members of the board of governors and the MPC are, are seated in the briefing room at the Abuja headquarters of the central bank. That's the, uh, the central bank governor, Godwin Emefele himself, uh, getting ready for his uh, presentation. Of course, we got uh, uh, a Twitter. Uh, message from the official Twitter handle of the central bank state that the briefing will start formally at 2.30. So we're just about uh, 12 minutes to that presentation. Uh, the governor will be taking uh, the first monetary policy communique for the year, and then it will take a few questions from the media. Thank you, everyone. Be on the standby. Let's continue the conversation from here. Uh, uh, Funke, uh, yes, we need that conversation around uh, what Bolaho just uh, uh, finish saying. Yes, so I want to speak to the FDI because, he, I mean, he mentioned it as part of the things that we also, um, he was talking about, you know, um, the level which we had in 2019 19. compared to others. And I, I, my take on that is that foreign direct investment in Nigeria is not, it looks at, I mean, there are so many things to consider, right? Um, so, I mean, traditionally we've always had, it's always been on the upward side. So people want to invest in Nigeria, right? Because they've seen that there are a lot of potentials and everything. But I think 2019 was a bit unique as with, I mean, you know, with election years, you know, people are, tend to panic and say, oh, what is really going to happen? Is there going to be a change of 
of government, it's going to be change of policies, and so many other things. They also look at the fact that we have a lot of bills that are pending, you know, which you know, hasn't come into force. So, so, for instance, the petroleum industry bill, somebody is saying, how do you expect me to invest in the oil and gas sector when I'm, I'm not sure of how this is going to pan out? So there were so many things that, you know, um, that, you know, came together and affected that, you know. And that's why we're saying that, look, if there's a form of, um, if there's a form of, um, you, know, uh, set, you know, certainty in, in, in the system, you know, and the people are saying that, look, we're certain, at least for the next couple of months, the next couple of years, that these things are going to hold, then people are more confident to come and invest. So, because, for instance, we're saying last week, um, was it last week or this week? I think it was this week when, you know, um, the, the government, the, gov the president was in the UK just trying to encourage people to come to, you know, to Nigeria to, to invest. Um, I, I, you know, um, the correspondent from, from the UK, he was saying something about how the market has reacted. Why did the market react like that in the UK? It's because just yesterday or the day before yesterday, Day, they signed the Brexit agreement, you know, which brings some form of certainty. You know, there has been a lot of how is it going to pan out, what is going to happen, are they coming out? But at least this one brings some clarity into it. You know, so they can work out the nitty gritty, but at least they know they are exiting by next week. So when you have things like that, the market will react. So, so the know. market needs positive vibes from yes. the fiscal authorities. Let me quickly speak, uh, ask uh, Ted Eugene about what you've seen so far in the, in the market, on market streets this year. I'm sure those of you who got bruised last year, We'll be smiling a little bit now. Bois Cement came in, brought about, about 13 billion uh, bags of cement to the market. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in terms of shares, I'm just, yeah. uh, just joking there. Uh, that's the positive news. Then you got the MTN Nigeria's uh, resolution with the AGF. Mm -hmm. It looks like we're clearing some of these clouds from mm -hmm. 2018, 2019. Uh, is this a change of mindset in terms of the investment uh, environment, tragedy, from the government, uh, looking at the fact that, look, even from externalities, the, the world is not waiting. Our neighbors are moving. Rwanda mm -hmm. is moving. Mm -hmm. Ethiopia is moving. Mm -hmm. Ghana is moving. Everybody is trying to keep his house in order. And the two biggest economies on the continent, Nigeria and South Africa, are, are in doldrums. Both uh, what, we have a negative outlook uh, from the rating agencies. Yeah. Uh, South Africa is one step away from being declared a junk uh, in terms of credit rating. Okay, so if we take a look at the credit um, flow mm -hmm. to the economy that I talked about earlier, we are positive around increased borrowing by consumers. That's one. Two is if we talk about liquidity flows to the financial system, I think one key area that we should be looking at is um, the ability of corporate or companies to raise capital at low interest rates, mm -hmm. which should at some point have an impact on the economy. The second thing to take a look at is what we'll probably see around other investors in the market, taking a look at the stock market, for instance. And uh, we've seen the uh, increased liquidity in the financial system playing a positive role in, in the stock market so far in 2020. So that this is where the issues around MTN, for instance, comes in. So MTN, we, we know the AGF has withdrawn from that case. So that sort of clears some overhang you know, on, on investment in MTN, for instance. So we've seen increased investors' interest mm -hmm. in that stock. Positive also is what you talked about around BUA. You know, Bua Siemens coming to list a consolidated business, um, which now happens to be like the second, uh, you know, largest cement producer. Uh, particularly when you consider the fact that they look to bring on board additional three million metric tons of capacity towards the end of this year. So all those positive factors are influencing investor sentiment in the market. Bearing in mind also another key element is um, dividend expectation. Yeah. So investors are expecting companies I mean, to... I believe we hear that sound bite over mm -hmm. the last few weeks that it yeah. looks like share prices, share price appreciation, dividend outlook is beginning to drive investors exactly. trying to uh, one day look at the NTB, then the next day uh, the stock market. As we speak, the, the stock market index is about uh, uh, two-tenths of a uh, percent, uh, and it's looking good. We'll take a, get a live shot of the... Uh, trading floor in uh, within the next uh, five minutes. Take a break, everyone. We'll be right back in two.
AC Motor. Oh, let's continue the conversation with my panelist here, Funke from Deloitte, Nigeria, Bolahaino, on my immediate left, from Contrast Capital, and of course, Tajuddin Ibrahim, the head of research at uh, Chapel Hill Denham and Investment Bank. Thank you uh, for. Let's get uh, a bit more interesting about this. I was just uh, asking whether 2020 is the year of uh, the Nigerian uh, stock market. But again, if you look at the externalities, which we must deal with, Mr. President says the land border issue, and I'm going to return to that because we can't keep this border closed uh, uh, indefinitely. As part of our foreign economic diplomacy, are we sounding right? Are we speaking right, sounding right at the moment? Or are we not there yet, but we're beginning to look that way? Bolahan, let's add this in. So I think we're on our way there. I won't say we are there yet, but we are sounding right. Um, of course, there have been a lot of positive from the border closure. Um, we've seen a lot of local firms begin to in increase profitability. Um, government mentioned that they've also increased tax revenue because of the border closure. So there are a lot of positive, but I think one thing that um, came out from the border closure is that we are not um, full sufficient. And of course, we saw a lot of prices spike when the border, closure, when the border was closed. Oh, by the way, okay, we need to go. Well, Arnold, thank you so much. Ladies um, and gentlemen, the governor of the Central Bank is now making his address. Take a listen. In an environment of sluggish global economic recovery and financial market vulnerabilities and tepid domestic growth. The committee appraised the, these developments and the outlook for the first quarter of 2020, as well as the rest of the year. All 11 members of the committee were in attendance. The global developments. The headwinds that characterized the global economy in 2019 showed signs of moderation, giving way to improved prospects for economic recovery in 2020. Consequently, global output is projected to grow by 3.3% in 2020 from 2.9% in 2019. The downside risks to the global outlook include the broad slowdown in the advanced economies, resurgence of financial stress in the emerging markets and developing economies, rising geopolitical tensions in the Middle East and extreme weather conditions in some regions. Output growth across major advanced economies remains fragile due to weak recovery in manufacturing activities and sluggish rise in global trade. Consequently, growth in the advanced economies is projected to slow to 1.6% in 2020 from 1.7% in 2019. With most emerging markets and developing economies facing brighter prospects, output growth is expected to recover to 4.4% in 2020 from 3.7% in 2019. The major impetus for this recovery is expected to come from India, Brazil, and Russia. In most advanced economies, inflation remained below their long-run targets, reflecting weak aggregate demand in the Euro area and Japan, as well as moderating wage growth in the US, despite the robust job performance. Central banks in the advanced economies are thus expected to continue with monetary accommodation into the medium term. In the EMDEs, however, inflation prospects remain mixed with some economies facing stronger ups upside risks than others. The domestic development. Real GDP continued to improve, although slowly. It grew to 2.28% in the third quarter of 2019, compared to 2.12% and 1.81% in the preceding and corresponding quarters of 2018, respectively. The improvement in growth was driven largely by the performance of the oil sector, 
wheat grew by 6.49%, while the non-oil sector grew by 1.85%. Staff projections estimate real GDP during the fourth quarter of 2019 and the first quarter of 2020 at 2.2 and 2.35%, respectively. The manufacturing and non-manufacturing purchasing managers' indices grew further in December 2019 for the 33rd and 22nd consecutive months to 60.8 and 62.1 index points, respectively. The optimism in growth prospects during the first quarter of 2020 and the rest of, of the year is anchored on the enhanced flow of credit to the private sector to improve manufacturing activities and financial and exchange rate stability. In addition, the bank's continued intervention in agriculture and small and medium scale enterprises is expected to boost growth. Identified headwinds to growth, however, include uncertainties in the oil market, high unemployment, rising public debt, and security challenges across the country. Committee noted the continued uptick in headline inflation year on year in December 2019 to 11.98% from 11.85% during the previous month. The increase in inflation which was anticipated was largely attributable to increase in both the food and core components by 14.67 and 9.33% in December 2019, from 14.48 and 8.99% in November, respectively. The increase in the food complement re reflects largely seasonality effect and the impact of the continued insurgency in some food producing areas of the country. Although staff forecasts suggest a short term upward trend in price levels, the committee believes that the bank's continued intervention in the real sector is expected to increase domestic production and lower prices in the medium term. The committee observed that broad money supply M3 grew by 6.22% year to date in December 2019. Aggregate credit net similarly grew to 27.33% in December 2019 from 23.12% during the previous month. This was largely attributed to an increase in credit to the government, which grew by 92.95% in December 2019 from 72.36% during the previous month. However, credit to the private sector also grew to 13.61% in December 2019 from 12.282% during the previous month. Consequently, Sectoral distribution of credit between the end of May 2019 and the end of December 2019 were as follows. Manufacturing sector, 446.44 billion naira. General retail and consumer loans, 419.02 billion naira. General commerce, 248.48 billion naira. Agriculture, Forestry and fishing, 160.94 billion naira. Information and communication, 156.47 billion naira. Finance and insurance, 129.87 billion naira. Construction, 86.54 billion naira. And transportation and, and, and storage, 68.61 billion naira, among others. Committee observed with delight that over the last six months, aggregate credit created by the private, to the private sector grew by two trillion naira and urged the management of the bank to sustain the current momentum of improved flow of credit to the private sector while exploring other options with the fiscal authorities to strengthen the legal framework for enforcement of credit recovery. Lower money market interest rates in the review period reflect the liquidity overhang in the banking system resulting from the restriction of individuals 
and non-bank corporates in the domestic economy from participating in the OMO bills at, at auction. Consequently, the monthly weighted average interbank call and open buyback OBB rates fell sharply to 3.82 and 3.24 percent in December 2019 from 11.42 and 10.73 per cent respectively during the previous month. The committee noted the improved performance in the equities market as the all share index and market capitalization grew by 11.61 and 18.27 per cent respectively between the end of October 2019 and the 10th of January 2020. This was indicative of the shift by domestic investors from the money market to the equities market in response to the bank's policy to restrict their investments in the OMO bills auction. The MPC also noted the improved performance and sustained resilience of the banking system, evidenced by the continued moderation of the non-performance loans ratio from 6.6% in October and 6.1% in December 2019. The committee noted that the improvement reflected the bank's continued deployment of heterodox policies to ensure that NPLs fell below the prudential benchmark of 5%. Outlook. Although global output is projected to expand moderately in 2020, Compared with the previous year, the overall medium-term outlook for the global economy remains uncertain due to the persistence of several headwinds. These include the lingering trade tensions between the U.S. and its major trading partners, rising level of levels of both corporate and public debt, likelihood of continued geopolit geopolitical tensions in the Middle East, fragile recovery of the manufacturing activities and the narrowing policy space by which central banks in the advanced economies can respond to future macroeconomic shocks. In addition, predicted weather-related disasters could pose further threats to global output recovery. On the domestic side, available data on key macroeconomic variables show prospects of improved output growth for the economy in 2020. Revised projections for 2020 show that the economy is expected to grow by 2.5% by the IMF, 2.1% by the World Bank, and 2.35% by the CBN. The underlying projection is anchored on the following conditions. Enhanced flow of credit to the real sector of the economy, sustained stability in the exchange rate, continued CBN interventions in agriculture and non-agricultural small and medium enterprises, and the effective implementation of the economic recovery and growth plan. The downside risks to this projection are primarily the rising stock of public debt and lack of fiscal buffers. Others include the persistent security threat in major food producing areas, poor and inadequate infrastructure, and weak public and private sector investments. Committee's consideration. The committee noted the persistent increase in the inflation rate, which stood at 11.98% in December 2019. It also noted that inflation is driven by both monetary and structural factors. Having addressed the monetary factors, the headroom for further monetary policy measures has become constrained, being supported by empirical evidence that suggests that inflation above 12% is inimical to output growth in the Nigerian economy. The Monetary Policy Committee thus called on the fiscal authorities to speedily address legacy structural impediments given rise to upward trending price developments. Amongst these, the committee identified infrastructure deficit and the long-standing clashes between headsmen and farmers, which are constraining domestic production and contributing substantially to a rise in food inflation. MPC therefore urged the federal government to relentlessly seek innovative ways of addressing security challenges 
across the country in order to boost aggregate food supply. The committee further noted the contribution of imported in food and other tradables to the rise in price levels, but emphasized the opportunity to ramp up production of domestic substitutes supported by the bank's development finance initiatives, particularly in the agri and manufacturing sectors. The committee noted the improvement in the financial soundness indicators, growth in assets of the banking system, and the gradual switch in the composition of deposit money banks' assets from investments in government securities to growth in credit portfolio to the private sector. It therefore noted that lending rates at the retail segments of the market had remained fairly sticky downwards as deposit rates had declined substantially. It also noted that in some cases, deposit money banks were not encouraging term deposits in their portfolio and therefore emphasized the bank's commitment towards the improvement of the loan to deposit ratio policy. On fiscal operations, the committee applauded the government for the recent signing of the 2020 finance bill, which opens a new vista of opportunities in public financial management. The MPC, however, cautioned that Public debt was rising faster than both domestic and external revenue, noting the need to tread cautiously in interpreting the debt to GDP ratio. Committee also noted the rising burden of debt services and urged the fiscal authorities to strongly consider building buffers by not sharing all proceeds from the Federation account at the monthly FAC meetings to avert a macroeconomic downturn in the event of an oil price shock. It urged government to gradually reduce reliance on oil receipts and focus on revenue diversification through reforms of the tax system. The committee also called on government to rationalize fiscal expenditure towards reducing the current excessively high cost of governance. MPC expressed concern about the rise in inflation, which increased consecutively in the last four months, as at December 2019 to 11.98% and higher than its target range of 6.9%. This rising price level is attributable to a combination of structural and supply side factors, expansionary fiscal, fiscal policy, and growth in money supply arising from rising liquidity surfeit in the industry due to changes in the bank's OMO policy. In furtherance of this primary mandate, of its primary mandate to maintain price and monetary stability, and in view of the anticipated medium term liquidity surfeit from maturing OMO bills held by the local pri private and institutional investors which would not be rolled over, committee considered it prudent to raise the CRR to curtail liquidity sulfate in the banking system. Committee is confident that increasing the CRR at this time is fortuitous as it will help address monetary induced inflation whilst retaining the benefits from the bank's loan to deposit ratio policy which has been successful in significantly increasing credit to private sector, as well as pursuing market interest rates downwards. The committee further encouraged the management of the bank to be more vigorous in its drive to improve access to credit through its pursuit of the loan to deposit ratio policy, as doing this would help not only in creating job opportunities but also help in boosting output growth and in moderating prices. It is noteworthy that gross credit in the industry grew by 2 trillion naira between May 2019 and December 2019, channeled primarily to the employment stimulating sectors such as agriculture and manufacturing. In addition, to increase lending to the retail and SME segments 
which is expected to help boost domestic output growth in the short to medium term. To retain the gains from the credit expansion and correct industry focus on lending, committee advised the bank to sustain its loan to deposit ratio policy and in addition, continue to deploy its DCRR policy which directs new funding for greenfield projects and expansion to the critical sectors of the economy, particularly to the agriculture and the manufacturing sectors. Committee's decision. On the arguments to tighten, committee noted that given that inflation rate inched up in December 2019 and that the rate is still above the upper band of 6 to 9% range or threshold, tightening may be necessary to tame the rising trend in inflation. In addition, the relatively bearish outlook of the equities market, market indices points to winning investor confidence in the equities in preference for coupon rate on bonds. Raising the policy rate will be a policy choice to reverse the tendency and attract more foreign portfolio investments. Also, the risk to the level of reserves persists persist as prices of oil futures remain uncertain. Policy tightening would enhance the accretion to foreign reserves and attain relatively st relative stability in the foreign exchange market. Moreover, raising rates will reinforce the stability of the foreign exchange market as an upswing in the rate will inhib inhibit demand pressures in the market through a decline in money supply. Although tightening would limit the ability of deposit money banks to create money, ultimately leading to a reduction in money supply and contain their credit creation capabilities, which would eventually lead to a rising cost of credit and credit risk, record risk as DMBs reprise their risk assets, the MPC believes that the aggressive pursuit of the current loan to deposit ratio policy thrust would continue to help to catalyze credit growth and positively impact output growth and ultimately prices. On the decision to loosen, members note that the relative stability in the foreign exchange market provides confidence to foreign investors. There is therefore no immediate concern that loosening would exert pressures on the foreign exchange market in the near term. In addition, an accommodative monetary policy stance would motivate banks to lend to maintain their profit performance and will result in decline of the overall cost of production. This will further affirm the bank's support for stimulating output growth. The committee also feels that the downsides to loosening is that it could amplify inflationary pressures as the economy experiences increased liquidity surfeit, particularly if loosening drives growth in consumer credit without corresponding adjustments in output thus escalating inflationary pressures. An interest rate reduction would increase money supply and exert pressure on the exchange rate. Moreover, an accommodative monetary policy stance may not necessarily lower the retail lending rates as interest rates are generally sticky downwards. On the argument for a hold, MPC acknowledged that a mix of heterodox monetary and fiscal financial policy measures have recently been deployed by the bank, noting the existence of a lag between the policy pronouncements and its impact on the economy. A hold in the rate will ensure its efficient impact on the economy. Committee noted the slow pace and low rate of economic growth as real GDP growth of 2.12 2.38% during the first, second, and third quarters of 2019, respectively, being below the population growth rate, still needs sustained policy support and push. Maintaining monetary policy rate at its present level is essential for sustainable support to growth before any possible adjustment. This would enable policy to react suitably to developments 
as they occur in the near term. In addition, retaining the current policy position provides avenues to evaluating the impact of the heterodox monetary and financial policies to support lending by the banking industry without altering policy rate. On the downsides to holding, committee noted that it will reduce the speed of economic recovery relative to loosening, extent, ext exert a drag on output growth as deposit money banks continue to utilize bond sales instead of engaging in financial intermediation to the private sector. In view of the foregoing, committee by a decision of nine members voted to alter cash reserve requirement CRR by 500 basis points from 22.5 to 27.5% while leaving all other policy parameters constant. In summary, MPC voted to one, change the CRR from 22.5 to 27.5%, retain the MPR at 13%, Retain the, CR, retain the asymmetric corridor of plus 200 and minus 500 basis points around the MPR. And lastly, retain the liquidity ratio at 30%. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Governor. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, um, that was communique number 128, a result of the 271st meeting of the CBN MPC. Um, the governor is ready to have the questions and for the clarifications that you seek on this communique. Please come up this way. Tell us your name and your organization. And one question, please. What a new year. Sorry, NPR 13.5%, not 13. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, the governor of the Central Bank, got in the Mayfield announcing uh, decisions of the uh, Monetary Policy Committee there, raising uh, cash reserve ratio and providing the basis for doing that from 22.5% to 27, 25.2% to 27%. Quite a lot of 27.5%. Uh, That's very interesting. My panelists, uh, Tajudin Ibrahim, uh, Oladoke, Funke, and of course, Bala Haina. Thank you uh, for uh, standing by. It's been a, a very long one. We'll have about a minute or two each to wrap this up. So let's start with you, Sajidin Ibrahim. The basis for raising the CRR was uh, consistent with some of the, what we spoke about earlier, some forecast that this will happen sometime in 2020. It's happening right at the beginning of the year. Exactly. Spot my on. point earlier, Hunt. So this is happening earlier than we expect. So which speaks to like, this is like an awkish sort of stone. Uh, by the uh, Central Bank Governor. And um, what we had expected is a, a repricing, you know, in yields will probably happen sometime later this year. But it seems to me like it's going to happen earlier than expected. Because when you raise the CRR here, what it means is it reduces liquidity. And when that happens, you know, rates will reprice higher. So the extent to which the repricing will go is what we may not be able to ascertain for now. But no doubt from like, tomorrow, from like Monday, we should begin to see some you know, higher the pricing of interest rates in the financial market. You take the CRR higher, and you have 65% loan to deposit ratio. What, what, what that thesis is tightening here, uh, Funke, isn't it? Yes. It's hawkish. Yeah. What else do you find in this uh, presentation well, that hits you? Well, I think, well, maybe because I was expecting that the APR will remain the same anyway. So, uh, which again, I mean, I understand where he's coming from. When you look at the parameters, you need to consolidate on the gains, you know. Mm. I mean, you really don't want to distort the economy so much, which is, which is good, um, you know. So, I mean, down the line, there will be revelation on whether they need to change that. But I think for this, I mean, I, I'm not actually surprised. Well, on this the, one. The, yeah. the governor says inflation above 12% is inimical yeah. to the economic growth of Nigeria. That's front straight to the point. Yeah. Yes. And we had, we're just a few basis points to that. Yes, point. so um, the loan deposit ratio that was increased, like I, I, I said that two trillion um, naira has been added to the sector. Of course, that means there's huge liquidity in the system. Mm. Of course, that means the inflation rate is expected to keep spiraling. Of course, that's why we saw there was an increase in CRL. 
So it's a form of tightening without necessarily increasing NPR rates. Yeah. Uh, like Tajin said, we expect to see repricing or some of assets. Um, so really, inflation would have been the big issue. And of course, they've addressed it by increasing CRL from 22.5% to 27.5%. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We need to draw the curtain at this point. Thank you, Dean Ibrahim, Head of Research uh, at uh, Chapel Hill Denham. Thank you for coming. Olado Kifunke, thank you. Uh, partner in charge of M&A at Deloitte and Gola Haino, Head of Investment Management at uh, Codros Capital. We thank, thank our you. viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. Special programming. On a programming note for our viewers on DSTV platform, stay tuned for news across Nigeria at the top of the hour, which comes up at 3 p.m. I am Bosin Amafaye, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone, and a great weekend.